Whatever it takes to defend ourselves and to defend our allies, the ball is in North Korea's court. What we know about this regime is that they prioritize their nuclear and their missile program above all else. The Russia investigation is heating up, and so is the president. Have you seen any Russians in West Virginia or Ohio or Pennsylvania? Sources tell CNN financial links could offer a more concrete path to potential prosecution. I own nothing in Russia. I have no loans in Russia. The president's senior policy advisor is now under consideration for a high-level communications job. He wants to have folks like Miller on television defending him basically no matter what. This is New Day Weekend with Victor Blackwell and Christy Paul. So grateful to have your company. Welcome. Uh, right now, Secretary of State Rex Tillerson is at an international meeting of foreign ministers in the Philippines and want to show you the images that are just coming into us here. Tillerson in that meeting with Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov. There is Secretary Tillerson. Now, in the next hour, we know he's also going to be meeting one-on-one -on -one with his counterpart from China. This after the U.N. slapped harsh new sanctions on North Korea over its missile tests. Well, sanctions that could cost the country a billion dollars in exports annually. Uh, listen to what U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. Nikki Haley told CNN's Ana Cabrera. We're prepared to do whatever it takes to defend ourselves and to defend our allies. And the, the ball is in North Korea's court. They now have to decide where they want to go from here. We hope that they will go the route of peace and security. Plus, President Trump uh, was on Twitter on the North Korea sanctions he, after a golf outing at his uh, New Jersey resort. He wrote, United Nations resolution is the single largest economic sanctions package ever on North Korea, over $1 billion in cost to North Korea. Let's bring in now Errol Lewis, CNN political commentator and political anchor for Spectrum News. Julian Zelizer, CNN political analyst and historian and professor at Princeton University. And Lieutenant General Mark Hurtling, CNN military analyst and former Army Commander General of Europe and the 7th Army. Let's start with you, uh, Julian. Good morning to all. And just put into context the accomplishment of getting a unanimous vote on these sanctions from the UN Security Council force. Well, this was a very important step and highlights both the severity of the crisis that many people feel and uh, Ambassador Haley's very successful diplomatic skills that she's shown. Uh, this brings in Russia and China into a coalition against North Korea that focuses now on economic sanctions as opposed to military action. So this is a big step. Uh, and I think President Trump will claim this as a victory for the moment. It's unclear this is going to work. It's unclear this will end the provocations. Uh, but it's a step where international alliances held in dealing with an international threat. So let's pull out a few of the threads there, Errol. First, let's start with why China and Russia, which traditionally have either vetoed or blocked uh, sanctions like this, have now signed on. Well, they want to be the uh, only players in the nuclear club, just like any other nuclear power. They don't welcome an unstable, dangerously fragile regime like North Korea suddenly getting nuclear weapons. And if you're China, which is right on the border, you also don't want uh, the collapse of North Korea, which would create a humanitarian crisis. So uh, one way or another, they were bound to get involved and to put, to put some pressure on it. I want to emphasize what Julian said, though. It's, it's really quite an achievement for this administration to pull together all of the nations and uh, to get a unanimous vote of this kind. Okay, so, uh, General, let's, let's go to ASEAN, where the uh, Secretary of State, Rex Tillerson, uh, is today. He will be in the same room at some point with the North Korean Foreign Minister. And I want to replay for our viewers what he said this week about the U.S.'s approach uh, to, to North Korea, this more conciliatory tone that we're hearing from Tillerson. And let's watch. China urged North Korea to treat the new resolutions by the UN Security Council regarding North Korea in a calm manner and not to conduct missile tests. 
All right, that's clearly not Rex Tillerson, but here, let me read for you what he said. He said, we do not seek regime change. We do not seek an accelerated reunification of the peninsula. We do not seek an excuse to send our military north of the 38th parallel. We are not your enemy. We are not your threat, but you are presenting an unacceptable threat to us, and we have to respond. Contrast that with the test of the ICBM uh, this week as well, and the, the drills in South Korea. Is there an inconsistency here, or is this part of a larger strategy? No, it's part of a much larger strategy, Victor. I, we're talking about something that's really big in terms of this front. Uh, the administration has been able to combine the diplomatic efforts, uh, not only the UN vote yesterday, but also the previous vote earlier this week that everyone focused on because of its Russian sanctions, but it also had North Korean sanctions. And, it, and this all came at a wonderful time because the ASEAN conference was just beginning to start. So you see a diplomatic condemnation by 15 nations of the world that voted on this at the UN going against North Korea. You combine that with the economic strategy, which was associated with this, taking away imports to North Korea of coal, iron ore, iron, and several other products, slamming some of their banks, taking some personal actions against some of their leaders, and finally, along with an informational campaign. Uh, this is now on the world stage with many uh, nations coming together. But when you use all three of those diplomatic information and economic tools, you always have to have the military tool on the background. It's not leading the way, but mis what Mr. Tillerson was saying is it's there if it needs to be, if there are additional launches or tests of nuclear weapons. So this is a very good strategy on the part of the administration and, and Ambassador Tillerson and Ambassador uh, uh, to the UN should be uh, commented for very good work this week. So uh, Julian, back to a point you made, the suggestion or indication that these sanctions above any other sanction will be an effective deterrent uh, to Kim to abandon this, this effort to, to get a nuclear weapon. Do well, we know that it will be? No, I mean, I think most experts agree it probably won't be and that the provocations will continue. I think as important as the sanctions is simply a show of international unity. Uh, that's why the UN can be so important. So this isn't simply about President Trump uh, versus the North Koreans. It becomes about many allies with different interests agreeing that this is the time to take action, whether that's diplomatic or military action. I would add the tweets are a little troublesome in that uh, some of the bluster from the president is not always helpful in these situations. And so uh, I think we need to check some of the enthusiasm with a reminder of the problems, not simply with sanctions, but with our own administration and the challenges that we're going to face. Errol, let's look at a couple of the tweets. Uh, the president tweeting uh, this about uh, China after the last ICBM uh, test. I am very disappointed in China. Our foolish past leaders have allowed them to make hundreds of billions of dollars a year in trade, yet they do nothing nothing for us with North Korea, just talk. We will no longer allow this to continue. China could easily solve this problem. Three billion dollar economic impact and China is on board here. I mean, with this uh, billion dollar uh, impact on their, um, their uh, income, does this public brow beating have a role? You know, well, uh, no, <laughs> in, in, in the following sense. Look, uh, North Korea is there uh, in part because China wants it there. It's not uh, a, a clear-cut, sort of unambiguous, hostile relationship. We should keep in mind, among other things, by the way, that those ICBMs that can now reach Alaska or even California can certainly reach Beijing. So that's not entirely absent as a consideration. But here again, I'll mention again this, con this humanitarian consideration that they have. Right now, you have a few hundred, perhaps even a few thousand people who can escape over the border into China from North Korea. If that becomes a failed state, you don't want to see 200,000, 300,000 people swamping China. China wants some degree of stability there. So they're playing a very delicate game of their own. I'm sure if we were to look at sort of the Beijing version of this conversation, they've got a lot of really tricky considerations that they have to deal with. And you can't change that by browbeating the Chinese government with a tweet. All right, uh, Errol Lewis, Julian Zelizer, uh, General Mark Hurtling, thank you so much for being with us this morning. Thank you. Thanks. And as the special prosecutor widens his investigation into the Russia and uh, Trump potential collusion or cooperation, what will we learn next? The top Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee, Adam Schiff, joins Jake Tapper live on State of the Union this morning at 9 a.m. Eastern.
Well, the military says the search for three missing Marines off the uh, eastern coast of Australia has been suspended and that it is now a recovery effort. We're told their families have been notified here. The Marine Corps is describing the incident as a mishap after an MV-22 aircraft was conducting regularly scheduled operations when it entered the water there. 23 of the 26 personnel who were on board were rescued, but the incident, of course, is under investigation. Well, still to come, the White House is uh, looking for a new communications director, and the president's senior policy advisor, Stephen Miller, could be a candidate. What his appointment could mean for future relations between the White House and the media. Also, following weeks of public criticism, President Trump is praising his attorney general, Jeff Sessions, now. What changed? Also, 